I had a question regarding this particular problem right here. If h is the function given by h at x equals f times g at x, um, where f at x is equal to the square root of x and g at x is equal to um, the square root of x at quantity cubed, then h of x equals question mark. And we needed to find uh, what that h, a, h of x function is. Now one of the first things that we need to recognize is right here, this is, this is product right there. It's not composition of functions. So when we look at this, um, this notation right here, we'll just start off with h at x is equal to the product of the two functions, f times g at x. This is really the same as f at x times g of x. All right, so when we look at that, we can just kind of substitute that information in that we have up here from those respective functions. So the f at x is really the square root of x times the g at x, which is the square root of x, that quantity cubed. And when we do the math on this, if you remember some of the rules from uh, earlier in your Algebra 2 class, we can rewrite this square root of x as x to the 1 half power. And it just makes it easier to, uh, to notate this. And this would be x to the 1 half power. And so we have a, um, actually, let me just go ahead and write that. I'm going to write x to the 1 half power raised to the third, OK? Because there's a, uh, a special property that takes place right here when we deal with that. So our new statement is x to the 1 half times when we have a power raised to a power, we use the property where we multiply those two powers together. So now we have x to the 3 halves power. And when we take care of this, um, we have two bases that are the same raised to different powers. And when we have uh, two bases that are the same and they're being multiplied by each other, we add exponents. So when we do that, this is going to be x to the 4 halves power when we do that. And we can go through and we can simplify this, and this ends up being x squared. Now, there's a couple things that we have to keep in mind with this particular problem, in that uh, when we're looking at the original equations right here, this one particularly and this one particularly right here, we have to be careful of the domain. Because remember what the domain for the values of x that we put in, we can only put in numbers that are 0 or larger. Okay, same thing with this, because we can't take the square root of a negative number, at least not for what we're talking about right now. Uh, we can do that with an imaginary number, but we'll get to that later. So we also have to state the domain for this right here, and this would be um, domain um, x greater than or equal to 0. So we have to restrict the domain to all values greater than 0, and this is our new function h at x. All right, so this is how we would do this particular problem. Hope this helps you guys out, and uh, good luck with the rest of your homework.